In today's show, I'm going to share with you five steps on how to start a business which will bring you success, happiness, wealth, and so much more. Hello, I'm Marcus Freed. Welcome to Marcus Recommends, where we share great ideas and celebrate life. This is unscripted, unbiased, unrehearsed, and it's coming to you live from the studio here in Los Angeles. Today, I'm really happy to share with you a five-part business plan, a mini business school, which is gonna help you get up and running and show you ways how you can start a business which is gonna be successful, joyful, and bring happiness and help to a lot of different people. So I began my first business when I was 14 years old. I'd been flying back from the States on a holiday with my parents. I'd been doing a little puppet show for a kid who was in front of me. He was maybe four or five years old. He was crying. And so I drew this puppet on a sick bag, on a, a what do you call it in American, a vomit bag? I don't know, whatever, a sick bag. Stuck my hand in it and got another one and did this little puppet show. My uncle picked us up from the airport and he said, hey, why don't you do this? You can do a kid's party entertaining. So this is back in, I don't know, late 80s and I set up this business and then we were booking these kids parties at 50 quid a time, 50 pounds, I don't know what that is in today's money, maybe two, $250, which is pretty good at the age of 14. I was hiring friends of mine and they dress up as clowns, as my co-clown, and we go and do this whole shtick. And that was the business and it was up and running. But the question is, what's the business you're going to do? And what is it that you really need to offer to other people? So I wanna take you through five steps which are gonna help you get really clear on your business. This is stuff I learned from my first business and from all the subsequent businesses I've started up and all the people I've consulted and worked with over the years. And point number one is be really clear on the transformation that you are providing to other people. Now, some people could actually phrase this differently. They could say, well, what's the idea? What's your product or what's your service? But by focusing on the transformation that you're providing people, it actually gives it more vitality and more life. So for example, back to the kids' party entertaining, it would be, well, the transformation is the kids are gonna come along, they're gonna feel joyful and they're gonna be happy and they're gonna have had an amazing time by the end of the process. Or nowadays, if I'm working with my coaching clients, I'm really clear that if, if I take you on as a coaching client for let's say three months, by the end of it, you will be making double what you're currently earning or you will have reached a far greater market or you will have brought your new product to, to launch or you will have started your business up, whatever it is that your particular goals are. So what is the transformation that your business is offering? And be really clear on it. Even if you're, I don't know, selling Coca-Cola, you might, the transformation could be you're going to quench people's thirst or you're going to help them rot their teeth you know what I mean, <laughs> just getting really clear. What is it, what is it, how are you gonna be helping people? Okay, point number two, when you've got your transformation, your idea, this, this product, the service, the way it's gonna help people, get really clear on your strategy. So how is your overall strategy going to look? How are you gonna bring it to market? What do you need to do to bring it to production? Or if you're doing a service industry, what have you gotta to do to get that in place? If you're a health and fitness coach, what programs do you have to have in place? What is it gonna look like when you work with customers? And this actually really leads us to point number three, which is be prepared to do the work. Just roll your sleeves up and know that to climb a mountain, it takes a bit of sweat. It takes a lot of sweat and a lot of effort. And just really take it step by step. But by being clear on your strategy, by really knowing exactly what you have to do and what it is you're planning to do, then you've got a map. I mean, otherwise it's like getting in the car, going driving, saying you wanna go from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, but not having a map to get there. It's just far too vague. The more detailed you can be, the better you can actually uh, get towards achieving your success. So if point number three is just being pre prepared to do it and prepared to get your hands dirty and actually go there, then point four, step number four, is remove the inner obstacles. One thing I've seen many times with clients is that people get blocked. You may have an amazing idea. You may be really clear about the transformation that you're providing to people. 
You may be completely clear on the strategic steps, the way that you're actually going to get there. You may be very happy to do a lot of work, to work from dawn till dusk or dusk till dawn or anything in between. But with this point number four, if you don't remove the inner obstacles, the things holding you back, I'll give you an example. One client says, right, they want to start publishing a blog, a weekly blog, and they know this is important because then they can provide content to potential prospective clients as well as existing clients and remind people they're still in existence and keep providing value. So they've got all the ideas for their strategy for their blog, they've got an idea for 30 different blog articles or podcasts or videos that they want to make. But I asked them one week, are you going to do it? They say yes. The following week, they haven't done it. There's some excuse. They're busy. They're away. They're on holiday. Their cat's got the flu. A month later, still nothing has happened. So one thing I've learned is it's really important to figure out what is it that's holding you back? What are the deeper questions? Is there a fear? Is there some kind of internal obstacle? Is there something you're avoiding? Remove these inner obstacles. And then point number five is you just need to do whatever it takes to create success within ethical guidelines. Don't go and start breaking into banks to get the capital you need. But just try to be as creative as possible and do whatever it takes and don't take no for an answer. Think back, if you need, of all the people who didn't have excuses when they got started, whether it's Steve Jobs starting off in a garage or I don't know, Richard Branson starting the student magazine when he was just a teenager, which led into Virgin Records, which led into Virgin Atlantic, which led into the hundreds of other businesses that he owns, if not thousands. So just really work on those resources. I'm going to review all of these steps. So right at the beginning, be clear about your transformation. Then be clear about your strategy. Then be prepared to work hard with it. Then remove the inner obstacles and then you've just got to go for it and just do whatever it takes. Now if you'd like some more training or more assistance with this then please head on over to my website marcusjfreed.com. There's a free video training sequence that's going to teach you how to get abundance right now, how to move from scarcity to wealth to riches so you can really continue living in or create this sense of absolute abundance and there's more tech techniques and support for you to get that training and to get that backing. And if you've enjoyed it as well, please feel free to share this with your friends. And in the meantime, if you've got any comments, any questions, anything you've liked, anything that's resonated for you, then just write them in the box below. I'm Marcus Freed. Thank you for watching. Be happy, stay happy and celebrate life. See you again.